<coughs> yeah, so my name is Manish and I will be discussing data simulation algorithm using advanced particle filters for stochastic PDs. And this work has been done with Colin Porter, my postdoc colleague, and Dan Pisan at Imperial. Yeah, so these are the basics of, I will discuss what is stochastic filtering and then we will go through stochastic model with numerics and some experiments. So what is data simulation? I think in this room everyone knows what is DA. So it sets up method that it gets post knowledge and which can be represented as numerical models of a system with newly acquired observation system. And this is like to, it can be used to design enhance forecasting, forecasting accuracy and decrease model uncertainties and adjust model parameters. And like DA is one of the major component of numerical weather prediction. Yeah, so what is stochastic filtering? It's like the process of using partial observation and a stochastic model to make inferences about any evolving dynamical system. So in mathematical term, a particle like filtering model is problem is find the conditional distribution of the signal xt given observational filtration yt. So here like xt has like some like suppose dimension r like nx and y is this is observation it has like a lesser dimension than this signal and this is like in mathematical term we can say that probability of xt in a given this partial observation observation data yeah so so i will just directly jump to this base recursion how we are going to use so suppose we have this posterior measure at time t minus one then we can use a forward model with this transition kernel to get this predictive measure at t. So it's, it takes this transition kernel text from t minus 1 to t. And then we can use data simulation. Here we are using, using nonlinear like log likelihood function and anything to have from predictive measure to posterior measure. So again, we can use this loop to go from t to t plus 1 and so on. Yeah, so these are some basic terminology of particle filter. So what is bootstrap particle filter? So suppose the initial distribution of particles, given initial particle distribution of particles, each particle is propagated forward using forward model. Then based on the partial observation we have, we can calculate the weight. And then this is, ESS is called effective sample size. So if this drops below the critical value, so if we can take like 70%, 80% or 50%, whatever we need it. And then the particle resampled to remove the particle with smaller waste by higher weights. So by this, using resampling, we'll have some lot of duplicacy. So that thing can be removed by jittering. So it's a very funny name. So we can just jitter the particle and we can take these higher weights and just do some jittering so that we don't have too much duplicacy. And if this ESS still drops, so what we can do is we can just like increase the variance. So it's like we can just artificially flatten the weight by scaling this theta term from 0 to 1. And we have to achieve this one because of we need like invariant distribution. Yeah, so this is one of the variant of stochastic Kamasa home. So here M is called like momentum density and u is the velocity and we have this noisy term and we have like gw are the k independent vinyl process and zyk are the special amplitudes so for this stochastic model we are taking this initial condition is u not as this way and think yeah, this has been already solved by colin cotter and thomas tom bender i guess before so so again, this is a weak form of this equation. So again, this P and Q are like CG1, the stress functions. And for the time distribution, we are using midpoint rule. And here we are taking this delta T is 0 0.5, and we are observing the velocity, not the density. For our twin experiment with the same resolution to generate an assimilated. Yeah, so I'm being lazy here, so I'll just show my code instead of writing algorithm. So here like, and is total number of ensembles. So we have like this ensemble is a list where the first entry is state space, and then we can add noise, and when also we can add some parameters if you need. So we are just this model of randomized basically is making like adding a lot of noise, and then we can run this model forward, 
and this is the array of of this ensemble and then we can calculate this weight so after this calculating this weight then we can see that okay where weight is less then we can do some resampling and after resampling we will have some new indices of particles and then that is done by this parallel sample so it has like resampling process after that we will have some indices and then we can do like ensemble parallelism with MPI communicator to communicate okay take this okay this is alive so take this uh, index index and copy and everything so this is how this parallel sample is done and now this tempering and jittering so I said this minute theta should be less than one but then it should be always one so this d theta we have taken this again randomized then we have run this then ops and then we have calculated this weight and when then we go to this function where we see that if ESS is less than one then again we multiply this d theta with the weight function and finally we come out if we have achieved this 80 percent here so, okay. yeah. and then we can go to the jittering loop so what jittering does is like we can randomize with this data. So we have this new noise, uh, this is the old noise, and then we can use MCMC algorithms to have accept and reject case, so which is going to be accepted and which is going to be rejected. And then we can just model run at the last. If still doesn't work, then we can do nudging. So nudging is like to nudge the data to the, nudge, correct the solution to SPD to keep the particle closer to the true state. So this can be, done by adding this new term here so so because of this now we are weight function is weight function is new one which is like given by which can be obtained by Gersanov theorem now we need to like maximize our weight for each particle right so for this we need to like minimize this whole functional and here comes this part five adjoint library we have used for this one minimization so I'll just show the code so we have just tape the model and then we start with like at the first initial distribution and then we set this control and again we use this capital Y to have this log likelihood method and we have this additional lambda function. So now we, we are having this j hat is a list for each step and we have this reduced functional here so what here we are defining this new derivative component so, so we have like I think we have modified this derivative component in reduced functional so that we can okay we can take okay this I, I need this component derivative I need this component derivative, not like entire one so that way we can fix this one and then we can just pause our annotation then we can go to go to the next step so here in the in the nudging we start with like just assign zero for every this dw and lambdas and then we call this j hat with this ensemble with this small y is observation and then we can this lambda opt is just minimize of this one so I think yeah yesterday David said that it's not very efficient this minimization right uh, not best of, yeah. yeah so we can use the maybe later we have to like update this and after this minimization we can take this lambdas to ensemble because this are, and then we randomize our noise and then again we can update this one plus step so that's how we have like, like now in updated ensemble. So now we can use this tempering and jetting to complete our process. So these are the numer numerical experiments. So I will just go through this EME error and relative biases. And these are the formulas. So for the twin experiment, we have taken this observation u plus this normal random variable with zero mean and this is the variance. And so for solving this forward model for this ensemble members we are taking this initially a random initial data so that's that's how we can take every part every every particle using this u naught so this how like initial ensemble looks so everyone is different because of sorry because of this noise yeah and so this is like dh step one this like this is a star this true solution and these yellow lines are all the particle so and this is step 1 step 10 step like 50 and 100 so it looks well and every DA step we are running like five times our uh, time discretization 
So this is effective sample size. So we have like 100 particles. So this bootstrap, if we have data is like a bit of informative, then bootstrap doesn't work because it will have only one or two particles, then it will just be like around below 10 or something. And this nudging and MCMC. So we are not using any tempering here. So we still, they have like a good kind of like 60 or 70, some yeah, 60 or 50. ESS without doing any tempering. So they are like performing with, performing well. Yeah, so this EME for bootstrap filter is, it's not good. And these are the, so I, these are the ensemble trajectories. I'm taking this weather station at X equal 20. So I have like 40, yeah, so we have like 40 X's, X points. So I'm just taking a 20, I can, we can see anything like take any data we need, any X points we need. So we can see that ensemble mean is not tracking very well the truth in the bootstrap particle filter. And when we are using tempering plus jittering, so we can see that errors and relative biases are coming like better. And it's tracking well, but not as we expected. And when we like add all the three, so again relative bias and, and error are like better than the previous one and it's tracking very well. We can see from here and also from here. So. And the last comparison is that if we do nudging, then we don't need too much tempering steps. So it's like, after some point of time, it's like we need like four or five steps where here we need around 20 steps. So like always nudging should be better because we are doing too many, too many things. Yeah, so this is a work in progress. Still we have to tune all the nudging for the diverse observation data and we have to implement parallelly for a special direction. I don't think it will be too much difficult. And the last one is, of course, for high dimensional speed is we have to implement. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's good. That's always better. Uh, Here? Yeah, it is good. Did you think uh, you're debugging our code for us? I'm not, no, I'm, I'm just pointing out that they're, like, you're, you're doing something that we should not be making you do. Okay, uh, that's fine. And actually, no, I am about to debug your code. <laughs> okay. I'd like 14. Yeah, this needs to be undone. Oh, it's yeah. it's just rough code. Yeah, so yeah, I have yeah. the actual code, so it's just like uh, it's just I just wrote here. I was being lazy here, so yeah. What I was actually going to say is, uh, Danny, uh, this is the like reverse situation to the context manager we've got. So we should we should put the other context manager. In. So With this annotating. sorry, With With annotating. annotating. Yeah. This is a there's a with stop annotating context manager, which is how you switch off annotation for a block of code, mm -hmm. and we should just give you a with annotating context manager, okay. um, among other things, that would make it impossible to make that mistake. Um, yeah. yeah. So, it, 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 it would also be nice, I mean, it won't, yeah. so the moment we, so what happens is the simulation step gets called several times, so yeah. we want it to only take the model once, and so we have this flag that gets set to, uh, in fact it's not, uh, the code showing it being set is not there, but it, it is set in, in the real code. Um, yeah, it's also. So I don't, yeah, I don't know if that's like you don't know, in the context manager, you could also flag it's like a one off. No, that's that's different, right? So this is just switching on off the uh, the taping, like, look, it doesn't imply, if you switch off taping, it doesn't imply you're done. So you, you, you're talking about a logically different step. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, think, I think he's yeah. asking, it's like, can I have a context manager where I can put like the flag that switches on or off? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Rather than, rather than saying no, that's, that, no, I don't think that's what, what he's saying is, um, I what, what you want is what he's asking for, which maybe we can give you, is a uh, is a context manager or, or something which uh, executes its body the first time and subsequently executes the reduce function. I think that's the so that's a generator or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, because because of this, like, because you you have this like. Because we are, because we're a taping model, the first execution is the taping one, and outside frameworks like this don't really differentiate between the run when you tape and the run. Like it's just a residual. It's just a functional evaluation, 
I see, I see the issue. I will, I will give thoughts to other people who do that. Question. Uh, yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Um, sorry if I missed this, but how did you pick the C functions that are like the spatially varying parts of your stochastic process? Sorry, like here. Yeah. Yeah. Which one you are saying? Um, sorry, I'm not getting these ones. Yes. Okay, we have just took some sign functions. <laughs> Yeah, I think we, I wrote something down as an example managed from day one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, let's do some sign function and we took like k equal to 4 so just yeah. to go through our like this whole thing. Yeah. So now we are going to like, we can use elliptic smoother here to have like du equal to this whole thing and we can just replace this one. Yeah. So that's our next one and I think we are implementing that. Yeah. You sort of plug, you, you specify, you can, you can create your own model class and just plug yeah. it into the library. So it's not uh i had i had a question kind mm -hmm. of related to your future work is like how much kind of manual tuning do you have to do for each new problem that you see and how much is it kind of like problem independent i think it's like i think it's fair like problem independent yeah because we just need one forward model then we can just mm -hmm. yeah edit it's kind of adaptive, so what will happen is you get different numbers of loop iterations occurring in the algorithm depending on how easy or hard the different problem is. Yeah. Okay. Any more for any more? Cool. Let's thank Manish again and all the people.